Hey guys, Tim Collars from Risk Based here. Today I wanted to talk about something that's been on my mind for a little while and that's cell phone carriers and cell phones themselves and kind of been thinking a little bit about how much like the car we drive, a lot of people use the cell phone and kind of don't understand how it works. So even fundamentally. So when we talk about a cell phone, the cell phone really what it is, it's a device with a battery that has a radio in it. And by radio, uh, I mean an antenna. That's, a, that's an antenna that goes out and comes in. So it goes two ways and we call that a radio. So there's a radio for the cell, there's a radio for the wireless, and inside your phone you literally have an antenna called a radio that connect to those services. You connect to your cell tower, you connect to your wireless in your home, or if you're at McDonald's or whatever, those are two separate radios. And when you're communicating, when your cell phone's communicating, it's actually checking in with the cell tower every two to five seconds, depending on the carrier. Every two seconds, the phone is going out, sending a signal out that goes everywhere in a 360 degree radius it looks for a cell tower and says, hey, do you have anything for me? Every two seconds, do you have anything for me? And that's SMS text messages, and that's cell, uh, cell calls, regular phone calls. With data, even though the data is going through the tower, it's a, it's a little different. Usually data is a, <clears throat> a connection. It's not something that needs to go out every few seconds. Although you do have applications that'll check in and, and kind of say, for instance, you know, if you have a movie app on your phone, it's gonna check in and to make sure it has the latest movie times every day. Or if you have, I don't know, uh, various applications that need to get data every once in a while, that's what kills you. That's a lot of what kills your battery. So if you have those kind of applications, I would turn them off. So uh, I can show you here. And when you're looking at your cell phone, you can go into your applications. And generally, I mean, I have an Android. So generally what you can do with Android is you can force the applications to stop. And you want to do that. You want your applications that aren't being used, even, you know, Uber or... Uh, Lyft or whatever other applications, you know, if you have a Kohl's uh, application, whatever app you install on your phone is generally just always going to be running. And it's very frustrating to me that that these vendors don't stop their applications on their own when you're not using them. Usually, as soon as you turn on your cell phone, those applications are just running. They're just on and, and using battery life. And it's very frustrating to me. Uh, so, what I wanted to talk about too was was cell phone carriers in general. So I recently switched to T-Mobile from uh, Verizon Wireless. I wasn't unhappy with Verizon Wireless's service, obviously, as everybody knows, and it's the old you know mantra: Verizon has the best signal. We know this, um, but Verizon also has the most expensive plans. So when I started looking around, a buddy of mine actually turned me on to T-Mobile and said, "Hey, you know, with military discount, you can get." Um, five lines for about $110 a month. And I was paying at the time $300 a month for Verizon. And this was about uh, t six weeks ago, two months ago, I changed to Verizon, uh, T-Mobile, excuse me. And I haven't looked back. Um, I'd say the signal is comparable, except at my house. There's been a few areas where Verizon would cut out and the T-Mobile cuts out as well. And then it might stay out for... 20 more seconds while I'm driving or 30 more seconds while I'm driving than, than Verizon would have, you know, would have come back earlier. But for 180 some dollars a month, um, I'm okay with that. Uh, I've even been, I live near uh, Yukon in Connecticut and I've even been uh, around Yukon and Verizon signal would cut out every once in a while. So nothing's perfect, I guess. And uh, money talks. So really that's the bottom line. Um, so when you're talking about cell phones, you're looking at hardware features, you're looking at um, and I know I'm kind of bouncing around here, but that's okay. So we're going to wrap it all up and, and it's going to make sense. So cell phones are a computer, whether it's an Android or a iPhone. And what happens is <clears throat> the iPhone is actually more of an appliance than Android. So iPhone is basically an app that you, you, you hit apps and you, they come up and, and that's it. And that's why in the beginning with iPhone, you couldn't run multiple apps at the same time. You, when you exited an app, it closed it, so on and so forth. Now, obviously, you can run multiple apps at once. But the, the basic idea is that even though there's a processor and memory just like the Android, um, it's still an app. It's, it's meant to be an appliance. Actually, appliance is a better word. So and that means that you're very uh, kind of... Uh, blocked in or, or fenced in, so to speak, with what you can do with the iPhone. You can only do what it lets you do. 
Whereas an Android is more literally like an operating system like you have on your computer. So you have um, Android that's based on a Linux kernel. Obviously, Google has taken it way beyond that. It's not Linux really uh, you know, anymore. You wouldn't call it that, but it's based on a Linux kernel. So you're literally running a computer in your hand with Android. You're running an operating system. And with that, I can run multiple different things that I couldn't do on iPhone. And for me, for a power user, and, and there's nothing wrong with iPhone. If you want to use it, go ahead. I, I particularly don't like Apple as a company. I think their business practices are terrible, very shady. They put out garbage products and they don't care. But that's a whole other story. But, you know, not that Google's a saint. Um, but for me, Android is what I want. I can customize it. I can do whatever I want with Android. And when you're talking about, again, about hardware, you're talking about the CPU of the phone. You're talking about the memory. You're talking about storage. And that's all components of a computer. So if you have your laptop, you have your desktop, you have a CPU, which is the central processing unit. That's kind of the first in, first out. You know, you get data in, data comes out. So uh, the cell phone pulls data from an app and then shows it to you on the screen. That's the in out kind of concept. And it's the same on your computer. You know, you have an application on your hard drive or you have a web page coming up, goes through your CPU, displays it on your video card. Uh, cell phones have video cards. So that's why there's some models of phones that are, uh, they have this great uh, video card for gaming in it, you know. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole line of products, there's a whole com uh, competitive line of products now that uh, manufacturers are actually coming out with uh, what you call uh, gaming phones. And that's a, whole, that's a whole other video. But suffice it to say, when you're buying a phone, the specs, which is the speed of the CPU, the amount of memory, the amount of storage, all that good stuff should be very important to you. And strangely enough, when I go into cell phone uh, uh, stores or whatever, you know, a Verizon store or a T-Mobile store, a lot of times they don't even have the specs of the phone. It's like, well, what is this? Oh, we, we, can't, we can't keep the specs of the phone. It, it changes too much. It's like, that's, that's absurd. Uh, so anyway, when you when you do this, if you if you are so inclined, you have to do this research yourself. You have to go on, you know, Google, uh, there's a site called uh, PDA database, PDADB.net, I believe, if that's still going. Um, they store all the specs about all the phones, and it's easy enough to find on the internet, but still, it's a little frustrating to me when it comes to, you know, it's like buying a car, and you you, you ask the salesperson, oh, what, what engine's in it? And they're like, oh, I don't know, it doesn't matter, just buy the car. It's like, no, it, it matters, obviously. Uh, so anyway... When you're looking at your carriers, when you're looking at your, at your phones, all that stuff matters. So really the bottom line with carriers to me is not only the price, obviously, but the cell phone has to work. So I'm in kind of a semi-rural area and I'm actually kind of in a, in a hole when it comes to cell phone coverage. And I need what's called a lower frequency band to, uh, to get signal at my house. And I actually have a repeater, which you can buy. They're called... Um, I'll splash it up on the screen here. I can't remember what it's called. They call them, uh, but effectively it's a, a booster. I think they call it a booster. Um, and when you when you plug a booster into your phone, uh, home, they give you this little box. They call it a booster. You plug it into your own internet, and it converts your T-Mobile cell phone into basically internet traffic, and that's how you can get good signal at your house if you have no signal from the cell tower. And most companies have this, you know, Verizon and all them. They have their own boosters. And uh, that will that will kind of generally cover the area around your house. It's not too big of an area, but it's enough for your house normally. And uh, so when you get this booster, again, your your traffic becomes IP traffic. So it's almost like you're making an IP call, an IP phone call, uh, just like an IP phone. Um, so with that, you know, signal is important. And what, with uh, T-Mobile specifically, I did some research here and I can show you, uh, flash these up on the screen, but when you're talking about AT&T, uh, Sprint, Verizon, all these companies, and you look at the actual bands, which is the uh, the frequency and the type of, of electromagnetic magnetic frequency that these carriers operate on, their LTE bands, it's called. And when you look at those, most of the companies, if not actually all of the companies except for T-Mobile operate at, I think it's 700 and above 700 megahertz and above so when you're looking at radio waves and you're talking about megahertz the higher the frequency which is the which is how often the band jumps up and down the higher the frequency the less far the radio wave will go 
So high frequency is really great for when you're close to a cell tower and you need a ton of bandwidth. When you're semi-rural like I am, I don't get great signal if I'm high frequency because the towers are too far away. They don't come this far. And with Verizon, they did, but that's probably because the tower for Verizon is different than the tower for T-Mobile. I'm, I'm guessing they don't lease, uh, T-Mobile doesn't lease the same tower that Verizon leases around my house. But regardless, if, if I go into the center of my house with T-Mobile without my booster, I get zero signal, totally off. If I go over to the window outside of my, you know, on the inside of my house, but right at the window, I'll barely get a bar and I might be able to make a phone call. Uh, with the booster, like I said, it's full signal and there's no problem. So really the bottom line is what I'm talking about with this frequency is if you're semi-rural or very rural, you might want to try T-Mobile. Number one, it's cheaper. Number two, they've adopted a band, a 600 megahertz band, and uh, it's the 66 and 71 bands for T-Mobile that you can look at. And, you know, try it out. Uh, what I did was instead of having to pay a restocking fee for a cell phone, I just took a SIM card and I plugged it into my phone and I went out to, to see how the signal was. Now, with that as we just talked about the bands on one side that T-Mobile supports those bands doesn't mean on the other side of your cell phone that, that your cell phone supports those bands. So for instance, I said the 66 and 71 bands are the lower frequency. Your phone needs to support that. So for instance, when I looked through, uh, uh, when I actually discovered this and, and started looking at phones, I looked at, you know, Huawei and, uh, I can't remember all the names. I'll splash them up in the screen here. And I looked at all, a whole bunch of different phone companies and manufacturers from your standard, you know, LG. Uh, I can't stand Samsung as a company. I'm not going to buy a Samsung product. Um, I ended up going with a OnePlus 6T because that phone has uh, the radio that supports all of the bands that T-Mobile supports. And that means I get better signal if I'm driving along or even at my house, I get a little better signal than if I would have a phone that didn't support those 66 and 71 bands. Those are the lower frequency bands. They go farther. And really my choice was limited to the phones on T-Mobile's website, uh, including the 6T and the Pixel. I, again, I don't want LG or Samsung, so I was pretty much limited to the 6T or the Pixel. Not impressed with the Pixel whatsoever. I think people were just took reviews on, on the Pixel and just blew them up. Um, I don't think that phone deserves 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 stars. Is is ridiculous reading all these reviews. When you actually look at the consumer who <clears throat> who's using those phones, the, the consumer reviews on those phones, they're not that great. Anyway, so when you're looking at the OnePlus 6T, it's a very modern phone. The only thing it didn't have on it that I wanted was wireless charging. Oh, well, you know, maybe next time I think uh, wireless charging has a little ways to go anyway. I think that uh, the technology has a little ways to go. So to wrap it up here, don't be afraid to do a little bit of research. Take a look at some of the links that I'll put in the description here to see, you know, kind of how the bands work, which cell phone works with what, and do some of your own research. You know, get to get used to how much, uh, you know, storage you may need. If you notice now, a lot of these phones, including the OnePlus 6T, doesn't they don't allow you to put a um, an SD card, a little uh, storage expansion card in the phones anymore. A lot of manufacturers are taking that away for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, to me, it's it's silly, you know, I put my music or whatever on it. I think they just assume that everybody's on the cloud and, and you're just accessing everything, everything on the internet. But when I fly, I want some extra storage there for my for my music. Um, but, you know, 100, 128 gig, are you using that much? Do you, do you have that many songs and music and movies, whatever, that you're putting in 128 gig to fill it up? Maybe you are, maybe you're not. There are some options out there. There's a there's a beefier OnePlus phone out there. If you're going with T-Mobile, I would definitely recommend the OnePlus. Uh, regardless, actually, if you're going with anybody, the OnePlus 6T is a great phone. Um, so, you know, look at the storage options. You can you can look on your own phone. If you go into the uh, settings and you go to storage there, you can tell how much you're using and, and if it's applications, if it's pictures, if it's movies, what's eating up all your storage space, you know, how much you're using and, and how much you need to buy in a new phone that doesn't support the, uh, the SD card expansion kind of thing so hopefully this video is educational for you and i wanted to get across a lot of the stuff that i've discovered lately and kind of share some knowledge um, leave a comment if you found something different than i did or if you have something to contribute to this i can even make a follow-up if we get enough comments and, and people want uh, follow-up on this video kind of go into a little bit more depth but i try to keep it high level i didn't want to alienate a bunch of uh, viewers here and, and kind of go in over anybody's head so 
kind of try to keep it high level and, and I hope you guys got something out of it. Thanks for joining today.